Hi, I'm Dana Shove, editor of Civil War Times Magazine, and I'm back with Melissa Wynn, director of photography, for our last First Monday Facebook Live broadcast for today for the, for the Fredericksburg Battlefield. And we're at another place that you can't really often get to very close as a visitor. We're at the base of the Meade Pyramid, this very unusual monument. I'll describe it in more detail in just a minute. I do want to just give an obvious disclaimer. You're not really supposed to be down here. There's Tour Stop 6, Prospect Hill on the Park Road, Lee Drive, and there's a, a very good view shed of this monument from that location. Uh, you have to come down a uh, pretty thickly brushed hillside and across active railroad tracks, so you're not advised to come down here. But I did want to get close to show you this monument because it's really unusual. So just kind of help orient you where we were as opposed to our earlier videos for today. That's due north, roughly speaking, and Fredericksburg itself is about two miles in that direction. And we were on the top of Marie's Heights, and that's about two miles in that direction. That is facing to the west in that direction. That's where Prospect Hill is located. And to the east is the Rappahannock River. Melissa's shaking your head no. That's the opposite. That's west. Oh, I'm sorry. I got turned around. That is west and that is east, but that is north. So, okay, thank you. Thank you for your help. So anyway, uh, we're down here at the, at the Meade Pyramid. And this was the location of the far left of the Union line during the Battle of Fredericksburg. And Stonewall Jackson's portion of the Army of Northern Virginia was along this railroad. If Melissa's gonna turn around and you'll see the tracks that belong to the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Railroad during the Civil War. Today, the tracks run in the same location as they did historically, but they're owned and run by the Conway Central Express. So, this is where the uh, where George, General George Meade's division of the First Corps actually made a breakthrough on the Confederate right flank. This area is low and swampy, and it didn't have as many Confederate troops defending it. And the federal troops surged through here and across the railroad tracks, but that division was unsupported and it was thrown back. And like all the other federal attacks that day ended in failure. This monument is interesting. It was built, there's various sources. It was built between 1897, we've, I've seen 1898, and I've seen that it was finally finished in 1903. But it was a uh, partnership between the Richmond, Fredericksburg and Potomac Railroad and the Confederate Memorial Literary Society, a memorial organization. And they wanted to build a monument out here along the railroad tracks. And the railroad thought it was a good idea because it would help sell tickets, because tourists would want to see it. Of course, visiting Civil War battlefields is nothing new. So they hauled 17 railroad cars of granite out here, eventually to build this thing. It's about 30 feet square at the base and about 23 feet tall. And it's based on a larger memorial pyramid at Richmond's Hollywood Cemetery. And what I find interesting about this monument is that we've, there's been a lot of controversy about Confederate monuments and Civil War monuments in general. And monuments have shifting meaning over time. When this was built, it was to denote where Stonewall Jackson's line was located on Prospect Hill. And it was primarily what you would call a Confederate monument. But over time, it's become known as the Meade Pyramid, and that's generally how everybody refers to it. So now it's associated with a Union breakthrough here. So its meaning has sort of shifted. And what it goes to show me is that really history is not in the monument. These monuments can represent really many different things. History is actually here on the battlefield and how we interpret it. And you can see it's, it's pretty impressive. And uh, I've always heard stories that this thing was covered with snakes as well, which is another deterrent from coming out here. This is my second time being out here. I have to admit I've never seen snakes, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should come out and do that, okay? So that's gonna kind of wrap it up for us today, but I'm still thinking about the directions. I wanna make sure we're right, because if that is north, that is south, that has to be east, and that's gotta be west, correct? I don't know. We think, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm just going to do a hold me a culpa here and take a look. That's east. So I was right the first time. The Rappahannock River is to the east 
and the, and the tour stop number six is basically to the west. So thank you all for watching today. It's been great. It's been a great day to be out here on the battlefield. I'd like to thank Kim O'Connell, Pam Barry, Sarah Coakley, Sarah Mock for tuning in and watching. Any others, Melissa, we'd like to thank? Yeah, Ryan Kaiser has been on all day with us and John Grady's watching as well. I think Earl Gillum's been around quite Correct. a bit. So, and I ha can't thank all of you individually because honestly, I really appreciate how many people watch these Facebook Live broadcasts. I appreciate your comments. We like bringing them to you. I want to remind you to pay attention the first Monday in October when we're going to also still be in Virginia, but we'll be around Williamsburg, Virginia, a site that's most commonly associated with the 18th century and the Revolutionary War. But there was a Civil War battle fought there, and there's a number of interesting Civil War sites right in Colonial Williamsburg itself that we're going to talk to you about. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate it. This is Dana Schof and Melissa Wynn from Civil War Times Magazine signing off from the Meade Pyramid on the Fredericksburg battlefield.